Hi, uh, this is Professor Umar Rao from RV College of Engineering. And uh, in this class, we will see about the Z bus building algorithm. In the previous lecture, I told you how to add a branch. And in this lecture, we will see how to add a link. Now, what is a link? I defined yesterday that a link is an element or a line added between two existing branches of a partial network. And since it is between two nodes already there, it will not increase the size of the Z bus. Unlike a branch, a branch you add between an existing node and a new node, so it will increase the size of the Z bus. Whereas a link doesn't increase the size of the Z bus. So we will see how to go about it. So a link is an element added between two already existing nodes or buses. And let's say the nodes are PQ arbitrarily. And uh, how am I going to overcome this? What am I going to do? What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to add an element PL in series with a source EL between P and Q. Okay, so in effect, I am introducing a new fictitious node L, right? In between P and Q. Why am I doing this? Why am I introducing something new? I'm not just introducing a node. I'm also introducing a source, a voltage source EL, okay? And I'm going to adjust EL. I'm going to adjust EL so that the current in the link PQ is zero. That is IPQ is zero. Now, when is the current zero? We already saw it when I add a branch. So what I am trying to do is, I am trying to model the link as a branch by introducing a new node L. And then I will eliminate this link node L. Okay, because I know my Z bus will not change its size. So this is how the algorithm is developed. Now let's see what we do. So now this is your partial network. Okay, so I have a partial network. Zero is my reference node. And then I have say N nodes. Now I introduce a line between P and Q. So I'm, what am I going to do? I'm going to introduce a new node L. We call it as a fictitious node, a non-existent node L. So that this element PL, the element PL has the same impedance as the element line element PQ. And so it is an impedance. Only thing is I'm also going to add a voltage EM. So look at the direction. I have made it negative with respect to Q and positive with respect to P in this direction. You can add it the reverse also. No, no issue. So I am going to adjust this EL in such a way that the current in this PQ is zero. It's an entire series element. It is zero, which means that essentially this will be behave like a branch. Okay. Then let's, next we will see what all we do. So this element uh, PL is, is the PQ only, what you have added. And I have only added one extra voltage source. Now VPQ is the voltage between P and Q. IPQ is the current here. And EQ is the voltage of node Q with respect to reference. And EL is the voltage of node L with respect to reference. And EP is the node of, is the voltage of node P with respect to reference. We have already seen this even in the previous class. Now, initially what I do, I inject a current of one per unit into any arbitrary bus I. So remember, if I have an N bus system, partial network with N bus, then the size of the Z bus is N by N. Now I have added a new node L. I have added a new node L. 
So the size will increase by one. So I have added a new column and a new row corresponding to this fictitious node L. And I have to find out what are the elements of this new column and new row. And so what am I doing now? Since this is like a branch, since this is like a branch, because I have made this current equal to zero by adjusting EL, I will try to use similar equations of what I did when I added a branch. So for this, first I inject a current of one per unit into bus I. And now you see the size of Z bus remains unchanged. But all the elements get modified with the introduction of the voltage source EL. The fictitious node L is added and hence the size of the Z bus becomes N plus 1 cross N plus 1. N is the size of the partial network. To bring back the size of Z bus to N cross N, because I have not actually added any new node, it, this L is only a fictitious node, I must remove that effect, I must remove EL, I must remove EL and we will see how we do it. Now look at my notations and the way I have represented EL in what direction. So this end is positive, L is positive with respect to Q, okay, therefore, therefore EL is equal to EP minus EQ, EL is equal to EP minus EQ. This is the first equation. Now, when I inject a current of 1 per unit into bus I, what happens? So I have this. This is my partial network. This is my partial network. Now I have introduced a new voltage source EL, which is the voltage of node L with respect to reference. Then I have IL. So now I am adding elements Z1, L, Z2, L, etc. And ZL1, ZL2, so on. So whatever I have shown in red here, these are the elements I have to find out. And then find a way to reduce this. Fine, let's do it. So first when I inject a current of 1 per unit in bus I, what happens? We know E1 is Z1I II. That is Z1I because II is 1 per unit. E2 will be equal to Z2I. Similarly, EP will be equal to ZPI. EQ will be equal to ZQI and EN at any bus N is equal to ZNI and EL is equal to ZLI, right? So this, all these we have even seen when we add a branch. Now what do I know? I know EL, EL is equal to EP minus EQ. Therefore, EL is equal to ZLI is equal to ZPI minus ZQI. So what have I done? I have a formula to evaluate all the elements ZLI. Do I know ZPI? Yes, I do know ZPI. Do I know because it's already existent in the partial network. Do I know ZQI? Yes. So I have a simple formula to find out ZLI from already known elements. Okay. So now I have to find ZLL. So what I do, I inject a current of 1 per unit at node L. So I get E1 is Z1L, E2 is Z2L, EP is ZPL, EQ is ZQL, EN is ZNL, and EL is ZLL. And again, now EL is no longer simply equal to EP minus EQ. Why? Because when I introduce, when I introduce, we'll just uh, see here. Yeah, look at this. If I introduce a current source here, that means I inject a current of one per unit in node L, uh, in node L, then IPQ is no longer zero, right? IPQ is no longer zero because I'm injecting a current into this node. We have already uh, seen that. So therefore, what is the equation now? Your equation now would be as follows. Yeah, 
EL would be EP minus EQ minus plus IL into ZPQ PQ. What is IL? IL is what I'm injecting and it has to flow through the line PQ. So therefore, and IL is one per unit, I get EL is equal to EP minus EQ plus ZPQ PQ. So don't wonder why man didn't put this earlier. I didn't put this because those conditions were different. This is the equation when I am injecting one per unit forcibly into node L. And now I know all these elements, so I can write ZLL is equal to EP is ZPL and EQ is ZQL plus ZPQ P. Clear? So I have an equation to find out ZLI, which are the off diagonal elements, which are the off diagonal elements. And I have a uh, equation to find out ZLL, which is the diagonal element corresponding to node L. And that is ZPL minus ZQL. And what is the ZPQPQ? This is the impedance of the line you have added. Good. So far, so good. So now I have the full matrix expanded by a size of one. Now I have to reduce it. So are these equations correct? Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. So now what do I want to do? I have to remove the fictitious node. Okay. What is there in the fictitious node? Between the fictitious node and Q, I have connected a source EL. So if I have to remove that node, I have to make EL equal to zero. If I make EL to zero, it becomes a short circuit. Therefore, node L and node Q collapse. And it's literally that you are eliminating EL. Let us see how this will change our equations. So, let us revisit our equations before we do that modification. We saw this. ZLI is equal to minus ZQI. Why? When does this happen? When P is a reference node. See, I have added a link between buses P and Q. Any, so I derived the equation for a general bus P and a general bus Q. What happens when P is the reference node? When P is the reference node, EP will be equal to zero. Therefore, ZLI will simply be minus ZQI. Otherwise, it was ZPI minus ZQI. And now since EP becomes zero, then I'll only have ZQI. And your ZLL will become minus ZQL plus ZPQ. So these are the equations you'll use for type three modification. Type three modification is a link between reference node and any other node. So now let us see how I modify the equations. Just see here. E bus, E bus is Z bus I bus plus Z I L I L. That means every, in every, column and every low, row, I have added one element corresponding to the fictitious node L. So my matrix equation gets modified as follows. I have E bus is Z bus into I bus. This is of the partial network plus Z I L into I L. Okay, so this, this is before I added, this is the partial network equation. And this is the element added because I am introducing another node. Okay. And do I know how to calculate ZIL? How to find out ZIL? Yes, I know. I have here right before me. I have the equations. Okay. And I also have EL. So EL will be ZLJ into I bus. That is the elements corresponding to all the currents I1, I2, I3, etc. Plus ZLL into I L. So this is due to the extra current I have added I L at the node injection at node L and these are all the contributions due to the other current injections, the other current injections. Clear? So this directly these two equations F and G they correspond to the expanded matrix which we have written, the expanded matrix which we have written. 
You can go back to that and refer if you have any doubt. Now, when I short circuit EL, that means what I'm going to collapse the node which I have added. So then equation G becomes, EL has become zero, ZLJ into I bus. Remember this I bus is the vector of currents without the new node, that is in the partial network, whatever nodes I had, plus ZLL, IL. So this is when I collapse. So from this, I get IL is equal to minus ZLJ I bus by ZL. Right, so this is the current. What, how do I interpret this equation? You're, I'm talking of a fictitious node and I'm showing some current ejection at the node. How do you interpret this expression? This means that if the current injected into that node, whichever node you have created, the node L, the fictitious node between P and Q, if this current is made equal to the expression I have shown, that is minus ZLJ I bus by ZLL, then EL will become zero. Are you clear? So if I inject this amount of current, my EL will become zero, which means that my fictitious node is eliminated. That's why all this exercise we did. Now, I substitute for this value of IL in my equation for E bus. E bus is Z bus I bus, plus ZIL IL and IL is this minus ZLJ into I bus divided by ZLL. So this is the impedance corresponding to your nodes without the additional node L. And this is the term contributed by the new node. And now, does this have the, have the new node L? No. Why? I have eliminated it. How have I eliminated it? I am eliminating it by injecting a current IL into bus L and collapsing EL to zero so that node is eliminated. So this equation is actually without the source EL. That means this equation is without the node L. Okay, so this corresponds to the actual network with the new link added between buses P and Q. So I can club this. So E bus is equal to Z bus minus ZIL, ZLJ divided by ZLL into I bus. So this is my matrix of interest. So this is the new Z bus relating E bus to I bus. Does this equation, this vector contain EL? No. Does this contain vector IL? No. Okay, it doesn't contain that. So this I bus is only the vector of injections at all the original nodes of the network without the fictitious node. So from equation, we can analyze that. So the Z bus modified this whole thing, which is put in the bracket, that's termed Z bus modified is Z bus old, okay, minus ZIL, ZLJ divided by ZLL. Z bus old is this Z bus, what I call this as Z bus. And ZIL divided into ZLJ divided by ZLL. So this actually tells me how to reduce my size. Because when I add a, a new node L, my size has increased. If it looks a bit uh, cumbersome, don't worry. We'll be doing a numerical example. You'll understand how to do it. All that is important is you should know the equations. And equations per se are pretty simple. Okay. So uh, what is the moral of, of this story which I have narrated to you? So when I add a link, I have a procedure for building the Z bus. First, I introduce a fictitious node L, right? And since I introduce a node L, my size of the Z bus increases. I find out the elements corresponding to the row and column corresponding to this new node L. So my size of the Z bus has increased by one. And then using the formula you're seeing, the formula I, I reduce this to my original size. That means I eliminate the effect of the new node I have created. 
since you are expanding and again contracting when you build the algorithm it is always advantageous if you add the links in the early stages of the uh, zbus uh, building because you will have lesser elements to manipulate now let us quickly summarize what all changes we make with zbus supposing i have the zbus of a partial network and the impedance of one of the line changes why will the impedance of a line change for whatever reason i may have put some uh, series capacitor in the line and it may change so originally it was jx right and now this jx becomes jy okay jx becomes jy so do i have to start building the z bus again no is there a way out smart way out yes what is the way out you just you have the original network you have the original network right now this x has changed to y so instead of rebuilding what i do is i am i add a new line jz okay in what way do i add new line jz in such a way that the parallel combination of this original x and z new line added z gives me the new value jy am i making myself clear okay i have a line of impedance jx now this impedance has changed to a value jy so instead of rebuilding the whole algorithm again because the line element has changed i simply add another line in parallel so now what i have to do i it is a link because it is it will be between the same buses so it is a link and i know how to add a link so i add a link of impedance jz now i can't put an arbitrary value of jz what what am i trying to model i am trying to model the fact that the line impedance has changed from jx to jy so when i add jz in parallel with jx the combination should give me jy which is the actual modified value so this is how you can modify any impedance of any line and build the z bus algorithm okay so this is one way you can do it next you want to remove a line so now let us say that there is a line removed for whatever reason okay so again please remember whenever you remove a line or change the impedance of a line all the z bus z bus elements will get affected whereas in a y bus when you remove a line only four elements get affected supposing you re remove a, a line between ij then only yii yjj yji and yij only those four bus admittance matrix elements will get changed whereas when you change anything in in a, a line impedance all the elements of z bus will get affected so we are trying to find ways of not rebuilding again okay for changes so we saw how you can Uh, change if you if any line impedance changes now supposing a line is removed very simple say this is j0.2 impedance and this line is removed now to show that effect i simply add another line in parallel of minus j0.2 okay so this effect is cancelled okay so will you be adding an impedance of is this the j.2 impedance or admittance think it over okay so if i add if i simply add here minus j0.2 impedance what will happen so to remove a line add a line in parallel with negative impedance with negative impedance okay because the net admittance will become zero the net admittance will become uh, zero and you can you you can model the removal of a line in this manner now addition of a line we saw or of four types a branch type 1 and type 2 or a link type 3 and type 4 so a branch these are what you will use in type 1 it is a branch between the reference node and the new node so you have zqi is zero you only have a diagonal element which gets modified and this is the impedance of the line you have added 
then you have type 2. I have ZQI equal to ZPI and ZQQ is this. So here I have added a branch between an existing node P and a new node Q. Type 3 is a link, a link between reference node and any other node. So I find the elements of ZLI equal to minus ZQI and this is ZLL minus ZQL plus ZQQQ. And if I add a link between, if I add a link between two existing buses, then these are the elements of the new column and new row. Okay. And then I reduce this. Whenever there is a link, I reduce this and get the modified Z bus. So with this, I think we have seen the entire Z building algorithm. So you know how to build the Z bus from scratch, from null. Nothing is there. Start adding the elements one by one. And you can add a branch between the reference node and a new node. And you can add a branch between an existing node and a new node. You can add a link between the reference node and any existing node. And you can add a link between two existing nodes. You can model change of impedance of any line by adding a line in parallel so that the net impedance is, the net impedance is uh, equal to the modified value you can remove a line by adding another line in parallel with negative impedance. Okay, so these are the various ways by which you model and you build the Z bus algorithm. And uh, in the next lecture, I will show you with an example of how this is done. Thank you.